You mentioned the heel trouser and you brought them out and I think we can confidently conclude that the wide-legged trouser revolution is in part thanks to you. But tell me the background behind the field trouser because wasn't there a little conversation with Ralph Lauren as well? Well, funny enough, there was, there was uh, so Ralph Lauren really liked them. A few people really liked them. I mean, actually, originally, weirdly, so weirdly, I was wearing one of my original pairs this morning when I came in, when I came in to work. But I'm now wearing a pair of cameraman. I'm testing a cameraman pant in a lightweight denim. So they've just come off the line this morning. Uh, so one of the guys from the factory just brought them up for me. And they're like, are you expecting these? I'm like, okay, so I'm now, now wear testing them. But the original ones, I've got two pairs of 1950s US Army combat fatigues. And I, I wore them to death. And I, they were big and wide and rolled up. And they were like button fly. And they had all these straps and dangly bits and all sorts of stuff on them. And I used to wear them all the time. And it was Charlie Porter. And Charlie Porter, who was the men's fashion editor of uh, the FT for many years and before that worked at GQ and is an amazing writer and an all round brilliant guy. One of the, the, the most incredible supporters of British fashion ever. Um, Charlie was like, oh, I love those trousers. I always I see you in those trousers. I really love them. And I'm like, yeah, they are good, aren't they? But I, there were bits that annoyed me about them. Like they were a bit over like there was it, it wasn't quite like mid 90s kind of boy band style. But there was like too much stuff. There were little tabs and things. And the, and the button fly was slightly annoying. So we redid them for torts and they just went an absolute bomb. And these field trousers became kind of iconic in Japan. People in, like all over Japan, like loads of stores. I think we had a, almost 60 stockists in Japan and they all carried the field trousers. We sold loads and loads and loads of them. Ralphie saw them. I went, a friend of mine who has the most amazing vintage store in uh in brooklyn um he we used to be the tie designer at ralph lauren and um uh called crowley vintage by the way if anyone wants it it's, it's absolutely extraordinary although it is quite expensive uh come on sean get your prices down but um, <laughs> um it's um i was in the office i went to meet him for lunch and uh little ralph pops out of his office and he's like oh those trousers are great and uh, so they've got the Ralph, uh, that, that weighs in his real voice, but um, <laughs> the trousers have had the Ralph Lauren seal of approval. Um, what's his name? Uh, Mickey Drexler, who, who famously was the, like the, the, the head honcho at Gap and started Club Monaco and has done all sorts of other stuff. Mickey Drexler loved them. He put them in. They sold them. They sold them at Club Monaco, I think, for a spell. But... Um, there was another American, Todd, Todd Snyder, he loved them. He loved them so much, he actually put them in his own show once um, and then bought them, and slightly sneakily, and then bought them and put them in his store. Um, yeah, they were, and, and I think American GQ did an article about how we had, you know, we had brought back the wide leg trouser. Um, so, so that was kind of cool. 